several months ago, I'm going to say back in December, uh, my son, well actually October, um, my son was diagnosed in Birmingham with autism. I am actually a special ed teacher and um, I asked the, the people of Birmingham um, where, you know, what to do. They actually didn't give me any good resources <laughs> and um, I, I found Rachel uh, by accident. My name is Rachel Mueller. I'm the director of High Hopes. It's a unique program for children and families affected by developmental delays. The main goal of the program is to fully independently integrate our clients into the typical classroom. We do this on a case-by-case -case basis. All of our children have individual plans. We take them where they are and get them where they need to be. You know, accelerate excellence is, is one of our mottos because the, all children are amazing. At, at High Hopes, our ratio is one to one. Uh, I'm a therapist and currently I'm working with only one client because she's in the classroom all day. So I, I spend my full day with just one client. But, you know, if I were spending more time in the High Hopes room with children who aren't in the, the typical classroom here at St. Benedict's, then I might have two or maybe three clients, but whenever I'm working with them, it's always just one-to-one. -one. My life has been impacted uh, in so many ways. First of all, I, like I said, I quit my job that I absolutely loved. Um, I was teaching, actually I was teaching special needs kids, so I'll be completely honest, I feel like a hypocrite <laughs> because I thought I knew everything <laughs> that I needed to know to teach special needs kids, but I knew something was wrong with my baby because he wasn't developing like his twin brother. And I thought that there was a lot of resources. I called around and there's just not there wasn't anything. I called Children's Rehab, I called so many places. The school system, the best they could do was, you know, put him in a special needs class and I didn't want that. I just wanted him to be, I don't want to say normal because like I said, I feel like a hypocrite, but I want him to, um, <laughs> I want him to have all the things that his brothers have. I want him to be as normal as possible. I wanted him to be treated normal. This is the first program of its kind in this area. And uh, up until now, there, there weren't any private programs like this that, that were focused on integrating autistic children and children with developmental delays into a typical classroom. And, and especially not one that involved families so, so much as ours does. So it, it, it's gonna make a huge, huge difference for kids in this area. So my husband and I discussed it and decided I would quit my job and just um, learn everything I could learn about autism. And Rachel has been a godsend. Uh, High Hopes has been a godsend. This is not just a job for me, it, it's a passion. It started way before High Hopes even opened its doors. At two, my daughter, we started suspecting issues with my daughter. Um, I have the same story as many of my parent, you know, our parents that we deal with today. Something was wrong, no one knew what to do. I was blessed enough to find a place in Destin, which is about two, two and a half hour drive away, that could help her. We drove back and forth there for four years to get her appropriate effective services. That was the driving force behind High Hopes. I wanted to make this available to parents locally, because autism affects everyone. The numbers now are 1 in 110, which is up from 1 in 150 just four years ago. There's so many kids that need help, even in small towns. Well, High Hopes is a not-for-profit organization, and our goal is to be able to offer our services to as many children and families as possible at rates that are affordable. And I chose St. Benedict's because of the loving, caring atmosphere. The values here are amazing, the kids are accepting, and I just felt like it would be a perfect fit. 
Because he has a twin brother, I've always compared him. And I've been told by pediatricians and teachers to stop comparing them, but there's, there comes a time when uh, you compare him. <laughs> I, don't, I don't want anybody feeling sorry for him, and I just want him to be normal. <laughs> for those parents who are feeling hopeless, there, there's hope here. There is. I've seen firsthand the effects of ABA therapy, and it works. It really works. And being involved in this program allows for socialization with, with their peers, which research has shown us is the best way things can be for kids. They need to be around other kids in order to develop. We see progress in all the children that come here. Whether they're baby steps or milestones, there's always progress. There's progress in, in the family life. There's more, you know, parents are able to relax. They know the kids are going in the right direction. And they know that there is hope for them to be in a typical classroom. After a long day, um, lots of days exhausted, but uh, totally fulfilled. Every day I feel like I've done something important, and, and that's the best way. I mean, it, it doesn't always feel like a job. It's something that I would do whether I was getting paid or not. Since we've been here, Bradley has just beamed. I mean, before we came to High Hopes, he uh, well, he still scares me to death. He, uh, socially, he would never play with other kids. He wouldn't look at, uh, wouldn't look at me, wouldn't look at other people. He would, um, his language just, you know, just wasn't um, coming along at all. But since we've been at High Hopes, I get more hugs, I get more smiles. He is learning to play with his brothers. He's, um, uh, I have more hope. I have a lot more hope.